Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Nay. If you're new here, my name is Nadine Salutin. Welcome. Please subscribe and join the fam. Yes, I am going to be sharing with you today my heart story. And boys, there are a lot to say. <laughs> okay. um, anyways, if you want to go ahead and see my heart story and know a little bit more about, you know, my little robot in here, um, then just go ahead and keep on watching and don't forget to give this video a big fat thumbs up because you guys have no idea, but every single thumbs up this video gets and shares and views, like, it literally helps the heart community so much. Like, I just want to be there for other people that are going through the same thing as me, whether it is a heart condition or anything else medically. Like, I just want to be your friend. Let's just be friends. Let's hang out. I hope you guys enjoy. Please leave a comment down below and, you know, let me know what you're proud of. Like, what are you most proud of yourself for? Yeah, leave that down below in the comments. If you know me personally, then you know that I have had a heart condition my entire life with a congenital heart defect, which is um, CHD for short, so you'll see me posting about that stuff sometimes. And um, the defect that I was born with was actually a atrial septal defect. And I don't want to just keep throwing out all these like random like words and stuff because I want to like break it down so you understand what the atrial septal defect is or means is that I was born with a hole in my heart. I actually underwent a open heart surgery at the age of two. Um to repair the hole in my heart said it was a very very large hole so it progressively got larger um you know the hole was like the size of a quarter which is very freaking large um i was considered like a blue baby if you don't if you don't know what a blue baby is um they call us blue babies because we look blue because um the circulation is poor so um heart function is a little bit low so it just causes a blue tint to the skin so yeah i was considered a blue baby the doctors told my parents that if i did not get that surgery i would not make it past the age of four and so at two years old i had open heart surgery and yeah that was a huge huge success and i love my mom so much she actually had the doctor cut me open horizontally instead of vertically. So if any of you guys are ever wondering, like, where the heck is her scars? Like, she says she has heart surgery. I don't say nothing. Yeah, no. Um, I've had plenty of heart surgeries. Um, I have scars all over my body from incisions, draining tubes, you name it, uh, yeah, um, so my scar for my open heart surgery is actually horizontal. Growing up as a kid, things were good, and life was great, and it wasn't actually until I started to get, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh grade is when I kind of was like, okay, I don't feel too good. Actually developing heart block, which means that you, you, <laughs> which means that you have like pauses um in between your heartbeats and i actually had all three levels all three i had all three stages of um heart block and the most severe case was when i was sleeping so i believe my heart was only beating 37 to 42 beats a minute sometimes like in the 50s and it was I had an irregular heartbeat on top of that and it was pausing for like up to five seconds which is like crazy because you could get a blood clot and that's not good yeah so you know in junior high I was really 
sh like struggling like that's when they had you do PE and run a mile and let me test you and stuff that I had never done before I never run in my whole life so when I had the teacher tell me like you need to go do you need to go do all these laps you know what I mean I'm just like uh <laughs> no your girl can't but anyways um um yeah so I tried out for the basketball team made it all that good stuff I completed the season but I wasn't feeling good and in one of the games I actually like almost passed out like it was it was pretty bad and I told my parents like there's something wrong I just don't feel good I was like getting like lightheaded and I'm tired and I was like dizzy you know when you stand up too fast that's what I felt like I was just like okay like what is this I don't I don't know what's wrong so um I actually went to my pediatric cardiologist at the time and I did a halter monitor back in the day they're literally not even the same anymore which is freaking crazy that I'm saying back in the day but back in the day um well sometimes still um they have like these little electrodes that they stick on you you know you wear it for a week and it looks like a little like a little radio or like a little iPod but like the old iPods not the new ones and um yeah connected to that for like a week sent it back to my cardiologist and that's when I get the call like you need to come in so it's freshman year is when I found out that I had a heart block and that I needed a pacemaker so that's when I met my electrophysiologist, Dr. Shannon, the doctor that just did my defibrillator upgrade. I'll say upgrade. Um, April 1st, that is the day that I, that I was a new woman, okay? Uh, no, but yeah, so that's the day that I got my pacemaker implanted and there's been quite, quite a few issues with my pacemaker. But to scratch the surface because the pacemaker story could be like a whole video on its own if you guys want to hear just a story about like more in depth about my pacemaker and now defibrillator um just comment down below and let me know so that way like because I, I don't want to like bore you guys with like so much details of like hospitals and doctors and I know that not everybody wants to see that so let me know if you do and if you do then I'll make that video but yeah so I'll just like scratch the surface about my pacemaker stuff so um so basically like the electrical current in my heart was not telling my heart to beat when it needed to beat so that's why I have my pacemaker and so now basically it's just like a little battery in there that's connected to wires that go into my heart and it like Tells my heart to beat, 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 beat. You get it. Yeah, so, um, you know, that's what my pacemaker was. So, actually, um, six months after I got my pacemaker put in, I actually had to go back to get another surgery because one of the wires detached from the wall of my heart, so the signal was not getting sent very strong. This happened two or three times. So, it was like, what's going on? You need to find out that your girl, as special as she is, was allergic to this steroid on the tip of the lead, which is attached to the wall of the heart, which is why my heart was rejecting my pacemaker. So, that after that, my pacemaker just completely stopped working. Um, so, that was the call for another pacemaker so this is where the story gets interesting and i feel like this is where like the traumatizing moments come in for me but we can save that for the pacemaker story okay okay i can't go oh crap oh crap oh crap <laughs> okay but yeah so this is where things get interesting so i went in thinking Okay, you know, same as before, except in this time it's not my wires, my battery is getting replaced. I think they replaced the wires too because, okay, yeah, so my first pacemaker was St. Jude and my second pacemaker was a Medtronic. I think. I went into this surgery thinking, 
I'm going to wake up. I'm going to be in some pain, but we're going to go home and we're going to rock it. And life's good. You know what I mean? I'm so blessed. Well, I am. I am still blessed. Let's just say that. But it didn't go as I planned. I woke up from surgery and like that's literally the part that I always get the most worried about like waking up from surgery because I'm like okay remember you're in a hospital you're gonna see bright lights like don't freak out so so when I woke up there was like the nurse that was there and he said oh you don't have a pacemaker anymore and me thinking like no I do I just got a new one like that's why I'm here and he's like no 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 no, you don't have a pacemaker no more and I'm like yeah, they took it out and put a new one in. And he's like, no, 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 like, you don't have one anymore. They they took it out. And I'm like, what do you mean they just took it out? Like, I know, like, uh, I talked to my doctor and I'm getting a new one. That's why I'm here. And he was like, no, you don't have a pacemaker in no more. And I was just like, wait, what? Looking around and I have like draining tubes coming out of me, which never really happened before with my other pacemaker surgeries so I was just kind of like I, I started crying at that point because I'm like okay this is different like what's happening I woke up from surgery I don't even feel normal I'm on drugs this random dude is telling me I don't have a pacemaker when I've had one for I don't know how long already just kind of like confused until my dad comes in and then my dad comes in and he has this look on his face and I'm just like what's wrong like what's happening and I'm like crying still because I'm like I don't get it like I'm so confused I have no freaking idea what's happening and he's just like Nadine and I'm like dad they said that I don't have a pacemaker anymore and he's like you don't and and I'm like what do you mean like I need a pacemaker to live what do you mean that I don't have one and then he's just like you have a heart infection, a really, really big heart infection. And I was just like, what? What, what do you mean? Like something went wrong during surgery? Like what? And, and you're so like out of it that I'm, just, I'm like, I'm so confused. So, um, after that was kind of a blur like I remember going up to my hospital room and everything but this whole instance is literally like a blur to me because I wasn't expecting it so I spent almost a month in the hospital um a little over three weeks so um because I had a heart infection, I actually had to stay in the hospital that whole time because, um, like, they had me in the corner all quarantined and everything because, like, they just didn't want anything else to go wrong. Like, a heart infection, that's kind of crazy. But, so, um, come to find out, like, they, like, it was ridiculous because they literally had to investigate why I got infected and, the reason why I got the infection is because somebody touched the pacemaker with their bare hands before they implanted it in me. So I had a pacemaker infection for, or a heart infection for a couple of years, but that I didn't know about, but I kind of knew about because I wasn't feeling good. And I kept telling people like, uh, I don't feel good, but they think I'm crying a wolf. Yeah, so that was really hard. I was in the hospital for a minute. And the reason why I had to stay in the hospital was because I was on these antibiotics that I kid you not, I wish I never, ever have to take again. Um, I could not take oral antibiotics. I had to have them through my vein, through my IV, and they freaking burned like acid every single time I got those freaking antibiotics. Like... And it would blow my vein every single time. And and if you don't know what that is, good for you. You don't need to know what that is. But basically, like, the medicine was so strong that, like, I couldn't use that vein anymore for the IV. It would blow. Blood would come out. Like, it was... It was not fun. But, um, so, I actually had to have a surgery the day after... The day after or two days after 
I woke up finding out that I didn't have a pacemaker. And the reason why I had to have another heart surgery is because one of the wires was stuck in my heart and they can't just pull it out, like, you know. So they had to wait for the equipment. I was able to go home because I was able to take oral antibiotics. And by, by that time, they gave me a choice. You can either stay in the hospital for a couple more days until your next heart surgery because at this point, I didn't have a pacemaker. Like, they couldn't put the pacemaker back into my heart or back into my body because I had that infection there. So they weren't going to risk that. So they needed to make sure that the infection was completely gone and um so they gave me a choice like you can stay here and wait for the next surgery which was like in four or five days and um or you can go home and come back for surgery and deal with it then i was so tired of being in the hospital because there's there's literally so much more to this story so yeah if you want to see that pacemaker <sighs> I think we need a pacemaker video because there's a lot more. I'm just trying to skim the surface. Like, okay, yeah. So, um, it was really hard being. It was just like, you know what? I want to go home. I want to sleep in my own bed. I want to deal with this and then come back and get a new pacemaker and feel great. So, I went home and about a week later, I got my pacemaker so life was great and then i found out two years ago two and a half years ago that i needed another surgery but i actually found out that i had a different heart condition too so i found out that i developed atrial fib and atrial flutter i still actually have a fib but so it's kind of weird to see in my age, but it happens. And, um, yeah, so basically, like, the top two chambers of my heart were like a little bird. It literally felt like a bird was flapping in there, like, what's happening? Like, I don't know, that's how I could explain it, or, like, popcorn popping in there. But, like, that that's so weird, but literally, that's how, I, that's how it feels. So, um, I actually had a cardiac ablation, and what that means is... They went through my main artery with a little laser, a little camera, all the way up into my heart, the electrical system of my heart, and they actually lasered away parts of heart tissue. So they killed heart cells that were actually catching too much electricity and making my heart kind of go crazy, if that makes sense. I really hope that makes sense. Um, so, which leads us to the most recent surgery that I just got cleared of. Yeah. I was not expecting this last surgery that I just had. Literally, it blindsided me. I found out that I actually developed V-fib, ventricular fibrillation, which is really not good. Um, so your ventricles are the two bottom chambers of your heart heart was beating so fast that it wasn't allowing any blood to like you know get pumped throughout my body so um my doctor actually said you know because I had a pacemaker it caught everything it literally records everything it's kind of cool but um it caught everything and the doctor just said you know this can be fatal and when he said that like it changed everything for me and so that's why I have my defibrillator now which it's still Medtronic so I still have a pacemaker I'm still a hundred percent paced so this guy's making my heart beat for me and what the defibrillator is is that if my heart ever went into v-fib again or I had an episode of whatever like my heart just stopped beating it would actually shock my heart internally and you know get things flowing again so luckily that hasn't happened yet i'm sure it will throughout my lifetime and we're just very blessed so yeah i just got cleared from that heart surgery and we're ready to go back to work and live life and you know really hope you guys enjoyed that like um this was really hard for me to make this video i've actually tried to film it a couple times before i've tried to like plan what i'm gonna say and it never worked out so i'm wearing my wonder woman shirt because i you know i feel like wonder woman like we've been through a lot you know we need to 
Patterson. So I just want to say thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And please give this video a thumbs up. Honestly, it will mean the world to me. Make sure you subscribe. Alright. Anyways, that completes this video. I will see you in the next one. See you later, alligator. Bye!